Darren, there you are in such an amazing setting. You have big pictures of Superman behind you and amazing illustrations. Wow. Yeah, I used to work at DC Comics a long time ago, so I used to get the employee discount. My office is completely nuts. I have signed comic book covers, which we can talk about later. So wow. like Hillary Clinton to Ellen DeGeneres to Barbara Walters and Sarah Palin. So oh, man, yeah, my office is like my trophy room. We'll post a couple photos of this, but the, the most important part, Darren G. Davis, is that you're wearing the e-baseball jacket. Yes. How, the I original. Think it, I think it's, what is it? It's probably 25 years old. Oh, Definitely. it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I still have it. It's in mint condition. And I actually still have my e-name badge to get into the parking lot. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't work anymore, but yeah. I thought it was so smart when we worked there together that um, we worked on a little briefcase, a canvas briefcase, mm -hmm. and I named it Carrie E because we were trying to get people to carry the network. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, anyway, so that just gave people a little bit of insight into how far back we go. And now you're out of control. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, it's insane. But yeah, I've taken everything that I learned at E and that I learned in the entertainment industry and brought it into my current career, which is comic book publishing. So I, I literally, I could not do what I do unless I knew the power of celebrity or anything like that fact and how to actually market something. So, and those are all the tools that I learned from my entertainment career. Hey, it's E.B. Moss and this is Insider Interviews. So Darren, Darren G. Davis, I know you as coordinator. That's right. <laughs> coordinator. <laughs> Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? <laughs> Can you coordinate now, this? Yeah. Now I'm begging you to be on my podcast. Oh, this is a pleasure. I'm so oh. happy to do something with you again. So I know. thank it's, you. It's like we're working together. Well, sort of. I'm I'm going to be kind doing of. all the work because I'm I'm going to have to edit this. And but you're brilliant, no matter what you say. Let's give people a little bit of backstory of of what we were referring to. I, I'm just going to like drop the title, and then we'll organically work in how you got to be there. Because right now, you're president of Tidal Wave Publishing, and that means that you are one of actually the leading independent comic book and graphic novel publishers, I think, out there, right? Yep. Yeah, I've been doing this for 20 years now, and it's gone through a lot of ups and downs, and, you know, and it's it's always it's always hard to stay relevant, and it's always a chore to stay relevant. And so I, I, I've, I keep doing it, and I keep reinventing myself and reinventing myself. And so, you know, I've, I'm 20 years later, I'm still here. Well, we're happy for that. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about how you got there, though. We were joking around because, of course, we worked together at E! Entertainment Television back in the day, as they say. And then you went on to – where did you go? I went to um, USA Networks. Okay. And, and so you stayed in entertainment for a little while. Yeah, and I, I worked at uh, – so I worked at – E right out of college and ironically oh um, <laughs> no what was weird is I was I was actually supposed to get an internship at Entertainment Tonight and they ended up like messing that up so I ended up getting an internship at E and then they ended up creating a job for me in the ad sales department and then I just wanted to grow and that type of stuff so I ended up um, transferring over to affiliate relations which is where we met that's right and so overall I think I worked at E for six years still one of the highlights of my life is working there. And that's true and I somewhere I still have like pictures from when we used to decorate birthdays and you did my <laughs> birthday like with cutting my face out and putting Batman or all that type of stuff so I still have a lot of that stuff and great memories um, and then I ended up leaving because I wanted to grow. And, and so I went to USA Networks and got back into the ad sales side and then ended up getting a job at Lionsgate. And when I worked at Lionsgate, I learned all about how to take 
products that are kind of less than like not big gigantic budget movies but straight to video stuff and make them look cool and so i learned a lot how to make properties look cooler than they are Mm -hmm. and like i was working on like leprechaun the movie and like warlock and like these weird b movies and so that really helped my career out as well because um i ended up wanting more money and so dc comics came knocking on my door and they doubled my salary and i was like bye (laughs) so let me get this straight you turned a career in b movies into being a leading comic book creator that's pretty good okay from leprechaun to legend and ironically i did a leprechaun comic book I saw that. Yeah. So I went back and yeah. So some of the stuff I do is still kind of fun and nostalgic. And I did it just because I used to work on it. Um, And so DC Comics, I worked there for about two years. Um, I was repping artists, getting them jobs inside and outside of comic books, more like for video game packaging or illustration work. But I was working with the top people in the industry and then just from or like custom comics and that type of stuff. And so I ended up... um, doing that. And then they were having a bit of a shakeup at DC Comics. And they said, well, you can come down to San Diego because I was working in LA at the time. And they go, you can come down to San Diego and edit Star Trek books. And I'm like, I don't want to edit Star Trek books. (laughs) So I'm like, that's not my forte. I'm like, not, I didn't think I was an editor at that time or anything like that. But ironically, 10 years later, I ended up editing William Shatner books. (laughs) So, so it is kind of like Star Trek books. Wow. Okay. So, so there's a lot of dots to connect in between from right. editing bad books to William Shatner and right. working with him. Right. And so okay. I, so I ended up, um, so I ended up leaving and uh, I got to rep artists still. And that's kind of what I was doing. I was like the biggest artist rep in the, the comic book industry. And I wasn't just, I, I could go outside of just DC comics now. So I was repping people like the biggest name in comic books. And in the late nineties, early two thousands, comic book celebrities were celebrities. Comic books were selling 9 million copies. Now the top selling comic book is selling a hundred thousand. So there's wow. like a big drop off. And so there's not that big celebrity comic book people anymore, but back then there was. And so I was getting them jobs at Nike and Toyota of illustration works and that type of stuff. And then I was watching these people create their own comic books. And I thought to myself, I'm going to try to do that. You know, I, let me try to do my own comic book. So I found somebody to finance it. Mm-hmm. And I created my first comic book, which was called The Tenth Muse. And people that know me know that I have this fascination for Olivia Newton-John. So I was trying to figure <laughs> out what kind of comic book to create. And so I just watched Xanadu. And um, I thought, okay, there's nine muses, so why not create the tenth muse, the muse of justice? And uh, wait, 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 was that Olivia Newton-John? I wish it was. She was actually one of the nine muses in Xanadu. So, oh, God. okay, I was wrong. Okay, I got to catch up on my comic books. Uh, Who was the tenth muse? Uh, she was my character that I actually created. So that I created myself. Brilliant. And because that. And that took off and that became the sixth highest selling comic book. I was working, I had a celebrity angle. I was working with Rena Miro, who was Sable from the WWF. And I've never watched WWF before. From working from E, from working at Lionsgate, all these places, I learned the power of celebrity. And so having a celebrity photo model on the book and then having a really well done comic book that was like super polished, really benefited and literally became the sixth highest selling comic book for that Amazing. for that month. Yeah. And so I've been, I've been kind of doing that for 20 years and she still exists and I still do comic books on her. So, so she truly was your muse. She really is my muse. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Uh, so uh, for those who are like me and less in the know, what's the difference between a comic book and a graphic novel? There, a comic book is like a floppy. It's like a, it's treated like a magazine. So Mm. it's usually, um, it doesn't have a spine usually. Yeah. So it's more like a magazine where a graphic novel is, it has a spine. It could be sold in bookstores and it's more than like 
60 pages. It's usually like about 99 pages is traditional graphic novels. Got it. And you've done both. Yeah, I've produced, I've produced over 1200 single issues. And comic books? Mm -hmm. Single issues. Yeah. I've created about 100 different titles. Um, But yeah, single issues. I've in twenty years. I've done twelve hundred, and I have um, like there's probably five or six hundred graphic novels that I've created. So how was that possible? <laughs> Stress, <laughs> <laughs> dedication, and fun. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> Now, so I'm going to like drop names because with you, it's really easy to drop names of the kinds (laughs) of things that you've worked on. Um, So you created things like Wrath of the Titans um, that got produced by Warner Brothers in 2012. You've done um, books like, or I should say comic books like Logan's Run Last Day, the Tech War Chronicles, Vincent Price Presents. You did work with William Shatner and created like a hero kind of book with him. And you've done a whole series with Adam West, may he rest in peace, of Batman. He was so fun to work with. I would get phone calls from him and he'd be like, he'd call me chum. <laughs> so it was so cute. Do, I always loved do your it. best impersonation of him. Come on. Oh, I, I'm so bad at imitation stuff. But he'd go, he's like, Darren, this is Adam West. Um, yeah, I just want to let you know that I'm being chased by a, you know, a shark and I have a bomb in my hand and I'm running. And so if you can call me back as soon as possible, that would be super great. Thanks. He was always so nice. And so I did a action adventure series with him and it's called mm-hmm. Adventures of Adam West. And so Adam West, for those that do know him, he is, he technically was super bitter about being typecast as Batman for all his career. And then later in his career, like Shatner did, he kind of embraced the cheesiness of it and then became a caricature. And that's when he started going on Family Guy and he just finally embraced himself. So we take this comic book and he's the most bitter actor in the world. And (laughs) this is the premise for the comic book. And uh, a fan sends him an amulet in the mail and the amulet basically takes him back into time, like a Walter Mitty kind of comic book series. And um, he gets to replay all the people that he's always wanted to be like a super spy or like a space agent. And, So it did really well for us, and people love the series. Um, We spun off a series with Julie Newmar, and so I got. I saw that. I I went on Amazon. I looked at that. That cracks me up. You take her back in time to reprise her role as Catwoman, right? Right. Yep. Hysterical. Well, the reason. Did you ever watch the Batman TV show? Of course. Please, I cut my teeth on that. (laughs) So the Julie Newmar one is. Do you know why she did not? Do the Batman movie and why Eartha Kitt took over only Merryweather? No. Do you know the real reason? How was so, that? That was excellent. Oh. <laughs> so the real reason is because she's a super secret spy that's a time traveling spy. And so that's why she couldn't do the, the movies and TV show because she was off doing adventures. So that's the premise for the comic book. <laughs> okay. Darren, you know the famous line from the movie, You Had Me at Hello? Right. You, yeah, you, you lost me at, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, your want, mind, your mind. Do you want some tea? Some truth? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Then we started working with Burt Ward. So which is Robin. Oh, okay. He's probably so you, you got he, Catwoman, you got Batman, and you got Robin. You got yeah. the trifecta. Okay. And he was just the most difficult person to work with. <laughs> yeah. Are we allowed to say that? I'm totally, it's out there in public, so I'm totally fine with it. So <laughs> yeah, he, the day the book was, his comic book was supposed to come out, he called and screamed at me and said, we made him look fat. And I'm like, in the comic book. Yeah. And we <laughs> made him look stocky, like a football player. And he saw everything that we did, every page, every image. So it's not like, he didn't see anything and so he was supposed to do a signing and he canceled so i called julie numer on the phone i'm like julie i don't know what to do can you do the signing for me please and she goes well why won't bert do it and i go well he says 
we made him look fat. And she goes, darling, he is fat. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> mic drop. Yep. Bam. Wow. So. Well, so I started to mention how your your mind is a fascinating place, and I'm not even sure who came up with the whole, uh, you know, Adam West finds a secret amulet, but I, I you did. Yeah, you I did. Okay. So let's, you've been a, a publisher, of course, an editor, a letterer, which as in L-E-T-T-E-R, yes. and the creator. Correct. Tell me about how you managed to wear so many different hats in this world of comic book and graphic novel media. I work with some really great people, uh, which is good. And I have to trust a lot of people. And uh, right now we're working on a new series. You just have to trust them. So like when you write a script, I, I, I don't micromanage as people would do. Um, I, I've kind of stopped writing a little bit just because I am wearing so many hats and because now everything that we, we're also doing too is we're making everything digital. And so the digital world, getting books on Amazon Nook and all these different places, you know, is a chore for 1200 titles. All of them need metadata. All of them need all this information. And so I'm in charge of that. And so that takes weeks to do. And then when you sign up with a new company, they want something different. So, mm -hmm. so I'm really good at, hypertasking and I have like lists and I have to do lists and I, I, I'm also lucky with timing when we release a comic book. Okay. So you've now worked with Batman. You worked with Catwoman, Julie Newmar. You took her back in time. I love this. And I know that you mentioned that you have signed copies of comic books you created on Hillary Clinton. You did a sold out comic book series on Lady Gaga and you've done Mother Teresa. But I think you also told me that you're doing or you did one with Stormy Daniels. Yeah. So I did one on Stormy Daniels about a year ago and I ended up getting a cease and desist from them. And, Ooh. and which I was like, okay. And, and I did get threats from her people, but it all works out at the very end. So that's the, that's the irony, the whole thing. <laughs> Anytime we do a biography comic book, we are within our First Amendment rights to be able to do it. So whether it's Lady Gaga or Hillary Clinton, most people are fine with it. But then I have gotten cease and desist. And it's just part of the business model. And sometimes what we'll do is we will run free ads for nonprofits for those people. And so then of they get causes that they're interested in or supporting. Totally. Yeah. Like with, Ellen, like with Ellen DeGeneres, we did the uh, Humane Society. That's where she wanted it. Where do you run the ads? Inside the books. Yeah. Okay. I want to come back to that because I, I got to hear what happened with Stormy Daniels. But are you ad supported? Is that um, a big part of your revenue model? It used to be. It used to be a lot more that way, but not anymore. It's, it, that comes from like doing ad sales and stuff. I, I had all the contacts when I first started this 20 years ago. And that's like one of the, as you were saying, you know, how do you spin a lot of hats and that type of stuff. And so right. that's one of the hats that dropped. <laughs> so And when the numbers drop, the ads probably drop too. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So. All right. Back to the good stuff. So you got to cease and desist, even though you were within your First Amendment rights. So right. you pivoted, you made some adjustments. What happened? Nothing. Uh, we got a call from Michael Avenatti, who called and sort of like yelled at me. <laughs> and then <laughs> okay. I kind of, then I kind of, um, then I kind of spun it and I'm like, hey, why don't we do a comic book on you? And so he was like, oh, okay. And so that's <laughs> when the Stormy Daniels thing kind of just like died down. So a year later, I get a call from the guy that threatened me. And and she writes this in the forward of the book. So this is all there. And, all public. Uh, okay. Yeah. So in the in the she and they said that they wanted to work with me again, and or they wanted to work with me this time. And I'm like, okay, that sounds great. I'm like in Team Stormy Daniels. And so we ended up. Um, putting together a new edition of the book and it's part of our female force series now, which is about female empowerment. And um, it's anybody that's made a difference in society, women, and we celebrate women. And whether you like Sarah Palin, Condoleezza Rice or Hillary Clinton, these comic books really do showcase 
the positivity in what they've accomplished. So the Stormy Daniels one, yeah, she she's done some pretty amazing things in her career. I mean, yeah, the but what she's done with her celebrity now, she's mm-hmm. pretty amazing. And um, I've actually gotten to meet her and hang out with her. And she's doing these comedy shows now, which are mm-hmm. hilarious. And we added, so in the new Female Force Stormy Daniels comic book, we added some extra pages to it to update it. And she actually edited the book for us. She, and then what we're also doing is she wanted um, a portion of it to go to Wounded Warriors. So we um, have the ad for Wounded Warriors is in there. And this is big exclusive here. Pew, pew, pew. Okay. Um, so now I'm in team stormy daniels and so as as i've been getting to know her and really liking her and kind of going back to the adam west thing and julie newmar where i fictionalized them we're doing a fiction series with stormy daniels wow yeah. you heard it here first you did hear it here first so that's great so what uh, will that how will that manifest itself what will that be like it's it's uh like it's, a series of four or it's it's just gonna it's gonna be an ongoing series. It's gonna be called Space Force or Stormy Daniels Space Force. <laughs> so it's basically Star Trek meets uh, Barbarella. Oh and, my god! Once again, it's it's so there was a, a series on Spike TV called Stripperella, where Stan Lee took Pamela Anderson and made her into like a a cartoon series. And so we're kind of doing the same thing with that. We're, we're developing this for a cartoon series with Stormy. We're creating it as a brand and the comic book. And the comic book will come out this fall. And it's we already have pages. It's beautiful. Um, once again, it's suggestive and fun. It's not, there's no like- It's still like PG, PG-13 though. Yeah, it's something that you would see on Adult Swim or you would see on- Got uh, it. Cartoon Network, yeah. First of all, I love the fact that there are, female empowerment. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I will give a plug for Strong Women Vote, strongwomenvote.com, because we're working on the anniversary. My friend uh, Ellen Chinette and I and, and some other folks are working on the 100th anniversary of women getting the right to vote. Wow. So we're all about strong women. So I think there should be a comic book about <laughs> that. <laughs> um from that political standpoint, I think it's really interesting that you're apolitical, in fact, and you mentioned, you know, whether it's Sarah Palin or Hillary Clinton, you've done stories on both, but you work with schools and libraries and, you know, you've sort of upped the consumption of biographies, right? Right. So as a kid, I was a reluctant reader. And so my parents just would try to to get me to read anything. And so they threw a comic book in front of me. And so the comic book, I really gravitated towards that and that, that, that medium. And so Disney coined the phrase uh, edutainment, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And so comic books can be educational and they can be fun and they can be entertaining. And so like with the biography comic book, the way that those actually started is in 2008, there was a comic book company that was doing a Barack Obama and John McCain comic book. And since I've always done female empowerment, superheroes, 10th Muse, Legend of Isis, uh, Power of Valkyrie, all strong, independent women, all great. That's one of my, my big greatnesses is that I can create female superheroes and like, and they're cool and they're not like Barbie dolls and they're, it's just, they're great. And so with comic book sales starting to slump, I was trying to reinvent myself and try to think, how can I do something? Let's think outside the box. So we thought, or I thought let's do a biography on Sarah Palin, and Hillary Clinton, because it was during the election season and they took off and we did it, as I said, and we did it through a female empowerment angle. So um, whether you liked either one of them, you have to appreciate their accomplishments so and what they've done. And so uh, they took off and they got me on CNN and Fox News and <laughs> everywhere. And then I'm thinking, OK, let's since those took off, let's keep going. And so we did Michelle Obama. We did uh, Oprah. We've done Laura Ingram. We've done Condoleezza Rice. Then came Political Power, which is a series about politics and so we did and and the first one that we did was colin powell but we've done george bush ronald reagan uh barack obama 
you name it, Bernie Sanders. And so at the end of the day, I don't want people to know who I vote for mm-hmm. as a publisher. And so we keep these things so unbiased and it's, it's really hard to do, you know, so we have to find the right writers to do that, that don't have a bias or an agenda. And with the celebrities, it's easier to work with, but when it comes to the politicians, unless they're threatening you, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, the weirdest call I ever got was from uh, Bill Clinton's personal assistant asking uh, if if I can send them a copy of the Hillary Clinton comic book. And that was because that was one of the first ones that we did. And I kind of thought to myself going, wait, you could go buy one. <laughs> I'm like, so, yeah, we've done Barack Obama. We've done so many of these. And I think I've done over five, three to five hundred co- like biographies. And the schools are receptive to this as well? Definitely. Schools use these, as I said, for the reluctant readers. Graphic novels are used in schools now, and libraries are picking them up. And so it is really great. So, like, if you're reading – if you're reading – like, they're for all ages. But if you're reading – say you're reading a book about, uh, let's think, you know, Lady Gaga. Say you as a parent are reading a book about Lady Gaga, and then all of a sudden you want – your kid to know about Lady Gaga too. You can give them the comic book and you guys can read it together. There you go. Yeah. I know a lot of parents who are reading about Lady Gaga and and sharing that with their kid. (laughs) (laughs) From Kids Bop. (laughs) So one of the places that we sell a lot of our books on is a place called Epic and it's epic exclamation mark.com. And right now they're actually giving free accounts and it's for schools, it's for teachers, and it's all kids' books. And it's it's for under 14. And it's such a great resource. And they pick up a lot of our biographies, too, and they love what we do. So the business model is, it sounds like it's moved into the extensions of things. I mean, since the actual numbers of um, printed pieces have has gone down so mm. much in in the last decade, uh, and ad the ad model has declined. Also, what is the business model? How do you monetize this mostly? Uh, well, the books do still sell. I mean, so a lot of things are sold digitally, and as I said, our stuff is on Nook, Kindle, Google. You know, there's all of that stuff. There's also foreign rights. And it is a nickel and dime business, but if you put yourself into a ton of places, those nickels and dimes add up to something. You're doing some other extensions. Um, I, I know with our our shutdown in Hollywood and things like that, I know that you were supposed to be in production with Insane Jane, one of your bigger titles. It was a TV show that is actually now going to become a feature film, and they're They just hired a new writer to do it. Um, We have about five things in production or in pre-production. We have five screenplays that are written by my management company, Bohemia Group. They're super great. Something's going to hit. And, you know, as I said, with this Stormy Daniels thing and Insane Jane is one of my favorite things that I've created. So another fierce female, right? Yeah, and she's she's not she's definitely not a Barbie. She's just a regular girl, and it's in a world where there's no superheroes, and she really wants to be a superhero, and so she does everything in her power to try to get powers. So, like the Flash got stuff spilled on him, and that's how he got his powers. So she throws acid on her face, and she's insane. She literally is insane. It, it's a dark book. It's definitely dark, but it'll make a great film. And uh, Darren, what would your superpower be? I know you've probably been asked this a million times, but I think it's original. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want invisibility to see what people say about me. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I still um, am one of those introvert extrovert people. So yeah. What about well, you? What would yours? You know, I always have flying dreams, mm-hmm. so I think that would probably be pretty cool. I don't want to know what people say about me. I'm, I'm like insecure <laughs> enough. I have Google enough for that, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but, you know, one of my, my favorite areas, of course, is audio. And I'm so psyched that some of your, your books have been done as radio dramas too, right? Yeah, I'm super excited about that. And you can buy them like on CDs and they're uh-huh. downloadable on Audible. And it's so neat 
to see what we've created into audiobook form. The theater of the mind. It is. Yeah, Colonial yeah. Theater Radio is the people that did it. And they aired on Sirius XM, which was kind of neat, too. Uh-huh. So. That's excellent. So how are you doing in lockdown mode? We reconnected not too long ago. We'd been in a little bit of Facebook touch over all the years, but it was so great to FaceTime with you um, a little while back and see your beautiful home. And then I got invited to your wedding and uh, it had to be like a virtual uh, wedding. It was our, it was our vowel renewal. So yes. yeah, my mom is terminally ill and she didn't get to come to my, f- so I, I will be married a year to Daniel um, on June 2nd. So yeah, you better be- remember that date. Yeah, buddy. Like, that's our, that's our one year anniversary. And so with my mom being sick, we, we had to fly down there. It's just, you know, there was, even with yeah. all this COVID stuff and we've been social distancing, I've always wear masks. I'm super, I don't even go outside. And so having to fly and do all that type of stuff was really nerve wracking. And so um, one of the ideas that we had, since my mom couldn't go to my original wedding, uh, to actually recreate it for her there. And so we did it. We kind of tailored it a little bit more for that. So um, you did. You made it more traditional, and you stomped on a glass. That's nice. (laughs) I know. We stomped. But then in her in her hospital room with uh, the gloves, we used the gloves as instead. That's right. So, but you also had like um, cartoon fabric masks. Yeah, we had Forky from uh, Toy Story (laughs) Four. Yeah, we had matching ones with your with your powder blue tuxedos. I know. Uh, There was that was great. steel, Steel gray, steel blue, steel blue. Oh. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. We don't want people thinking I'm tacky here. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So other than that, you're, you're literally able to work from home. It's not really any different for you, except now you have a ring on your finger and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, I've always been able to work from where I'm at. The, the difference now from like, even like 10 years ago is that I used to get comic book pages, the originals, and now everything is done digitally. People are drawing digitally. So there's not actually original paperwork anymore. And so I can now forward stuff from one person to another person. So like I can take the inks and send it to the colorist and it makes life easier for me and easier on not having to pay FedEx charges anymore. So. Got it. Wow. Things have really changed. I know. Uh, so I just want to come full circle and end it with a sort of culture celebrity tag since we started by talking about E and, and all of the celebrity books that you've done. The news I saw is you also have a Tiger King comic book out. So what happened was, is, uh, (laughs) um, When we did the Stormy Daniels comic book, the original one, we thought, okay, this is the best, worst idea ever. Let's do it. And so during this COVID time, people are either talking about COVID or Tiger King, nothing else. There's nothing in between. News is not anything. So I'm like, so I talked to my team, uh, Joe Paradise, which is ironically the artist's name on- True name. True name. Yeah. And (laughs) so, and then Michael Frizzell, who's actually writing it and- um, we're like, let's do the best worst idea again. And so we came up with the idea to do the Tiger King comic book. And what we're doing with it is we're doing it a little bit different than what anybody else has done. And, or what the Netflix series has not told you is we're actually doing the prequel to it. So you get to find out about like Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic and why they, they do have animosity towards each other. And we're working with PETA and they're giving us some information that, you know, was left out of the Netflix series that Carol Baskin doesn't breed animals. She gets animals from zoos and, you know, discarded animals like circuses and that type of stuff. And people are not allowed to touch them. And even our volunteers aren't allowed to touch them and that type of stuff. And they kind of left that out. They made it look like she has like the zoo kind of thing. To a degree. I think that it sounded like she started in the same kind of camp as Joe Exotic, but then she kind of saw the light and became 
much more a, of an endangered species right. protector and PETA evangelist. So I I did see the 180 right. kind and, of thing. And working with PETA has just been so great just from that standpoint. I, I have a relationship with them. I've done a couple campaigns for them. I still wear leather and I eat meat. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean. Don't tell them that. Oh, I d- no. When I met with the head of it, I'm like, uh, I just thought, oh my God, I'm wearing leather shoes. I'm like, eh. and he's like, don't worry. I'm like, so. You know, one of the best things, so I, I stopped eating meat when I was 16 years old, mm. a long time ago. Um, but one of the best um, sort of rationale for that, I think it was Drew Barrymore, um, might've been Gwyneth Paltrow, one of those two. They said that, you know, some people draw the line at this, some people draw the line at that, and we all do the best we can, right? right. So- Yes, I wear leather shoes. Other people would be completely vegan like my niece. So right. there you go. Yeah, I'm too lazy to be vegan or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I eat what my husband cooks me. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've delved into the um, the sort of surreal world <laughs> of living at home from the surreal world of comic books and, and the mind of Darren Davis. This was fascinating. I'm so happy to keep getting to know you as, you know, we take advantage of technology and and um, retain and, and up our friendship, Darren. And I have to tell you that you were and one of my mentors. You are somebody that shaped my career and has shaped my life. And that is the honest God truth. I've told you that before in private, but now I'm publicly saying it. You took me under your wing when I was like this naive little green um, coordinator. (laughs) Coordinator. (laughs) And you've taught, (laughs) taught me so much about the industry, about how to work, how to have a career. And I do think the other thing that I have which you have as well, is you have such a strong worth ethic. And I think that's why you and I bonded pretty quick. So, yeah, thank you for that. And um, Darren, I really appreciate those words. You know, we never know the ripple effect that we're going to have on people, but I do expect that the pay, the, the pay for that will be E.B. Moss, female force superhero. Dun, dun, what do you dun. think? I love it. Okay, good. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. Darren, thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you for Great having me. You. Yeah, yeah. We'll do it again sometime, I hope, okay? Definitely. I hope you got some good inside scoop from this podcast. There's a lot more where this one came from. So please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you download your podcasts. Apple, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Podcasts. You know the drill. I also want to thank Eric Klein for his excellent editing and my friend John Clayton for the fantastic theme music for insider interviews with E.B. Moss. <laughs>